a news program from a native perspective. Whether it's a flagpole raising or whether it's an elders conference, if it's important to the people and I make a story out of it, this is the most exciting, wonderful, fun time of my life. Hello and welcome to Heartbeat Alaska. I'm Jeannie Green. Hello everyone and welcome to Heartbeat Alaska Native News, Native Information. I'm Jeannie Green, welcome aboard. On today's program, we travel to southwestern Alaska and visit with a gentleman that you've probably heard about or read about or seen on TV, Mr. Mike Williams, a man who has become a strong advocate for rural Alaska and Native Americans across the nation. I'll be back with Mike Williams right after this. Bye, Dad. Bye, Junior. From generation to generation, the passing down of tradition has been the Native way. You never eat snow because it'll always it'll get you tired. Survival in the Alaska wilderness depends on one's knowledge of ancient Native secrets. Nowadays, we carry this. I always carry it next to your body. It's the water. Purity guaranteed. Aquafina. Heartbeat wishes to thank Haglin Aviation Services Incorporated for making our stories possible. We travel on Haglin Aviation and we thank you for choosing them too. Haglin Aviation has been serving Alaskans in the bush for over 20 years. We fly Haglins all the time. Operating with 29 aircraft at eight stations across Alaska and servicing over 100 destinations daily. Haglin Aviation, your ticket to ride in rural Alaska. Akiak, Alaska has been known through the 1800s as the crossing grounds into the Yukon River Basin. It's also an area rich with tradition and legends, like this story of how Akiak got its name. There was once a couple that lived in the village of Kaliganik, and though they tried, they were not able to have children of their own. One day, the husband came across a bear cub all by itself and decided to adopt the cub into their family. The cub grew and grew and became so big that the couple had a difficult time keeping the bear fed. The people of the village became fearful of the bear and what might happen if the bear wasn't fed properly and told the couple that they needed to take their bear and move across the river. So, the couple packed up their things and moved across the river to Akiak, which in the Yupik language means the other side. The village of Akiak is located on the Yukon-Kuskokwim Delta on the west bank of the Kuskokwim River, which is the main transportation route year-round. It is a Yupik village that is home for just over 300 people who live mostly a subsistence lifestyle. It is also the home for one man who has dedicated his life to making a difference for the native people of rural Alaska, as well as the native people across the nation. His name is Mike Williams. Mike was
was born and raised in Akiak and has lived here for most of his life. It was during his junior year in high school that Mike decided to trade sports for politics and spent his senior year as president of the student body. After graduating from high school, Mike traveled across the lower 48, advocating for Native Americans and their rights. Nowadays, Mike is still fighting for equality, equality in the way of life for Native Alaskans and our rights. Highest on Mike's list of priorities is education. He has been serving as a school board member in Akiak for the past 16 years and has held the seat of second vice chair on the State Board of Education for the past seven years, implementing policy and setting regulations for the education laws that are passed in Alaska. I think education um, would uh, prepare us to uh, uh, be here um, or uh, elsewhere and succeed. And I think uh, each parent uh, hopes for their children to succeed um, uh, in uh, life. And, and uh, uh, regardless of uh, uh, kids staying in the village or going to um, a higher education or to um, vocational technical schools, uh, I think uh, we need to set them up to uh, succeed in our own school district here, um, uh, we've been um, um, really advocating for immersion programs so um, our language will not be lost as well as our culture. But the battle for a higher education has proven to be an endless one. Akiak alone has 31 high school students and only three teachers to meet their needs. In the past 10 years, there have been numerous dropouts and only a handful of graduates. And in the village, where many of these kids will live out their lives, there is a need for technical training in a variety of fields, a need that is not being met. And to top things off, these kids are attending school in classrooms that are in need of repair. It's been an uphill battle that has kept Mike Williams and many others very busy. But for the first time in Alaska history, three villages in the same district as Akiak have been put at the top of a list for repairs, the capital construction list. What this means is that the schools in these three villages need repairs and reconstruction more than any other schools in the state. One of Mike's ideas is to take the money that would originally be used to fix up these buildings and build a high school that would serve all three of these villages, which are relatively close to one another. It's a concept that appealed so strongly to Rod Pruitt that he and his wife April packed their bags and moved to Akiak. He, he, he came after us and he didn't have to come after us very hard because uh, I thought, this has got to be good. Now the principal for the Akiak School, Rod sees this as once-in-a-lifetime opportunity that will likely never happen again. It's not a boarding school. It's a consolidated local schools. This isn't a place where kids have to pack up and say goodbye to mom and dad and go off for months at a time to some other city and live with complete strangers these kids would be living with their cousins and their brothers and their sisters and their aunts and their uncles just minutes away from where they live. In a consolidated high school, we would have, rather than in Akiak, 33 enrolled high school students. A consolidated high school in our district alone would have probably 150 or 160 high schoolers. We'd be in a different league. We'd have 10, 11, 12 certified high school teachers, specialists in many areas. We would have, uh, we would have the advantages of size, uh, programs. We decided to put the theory to test and asked three students who were nearby what they thought about the idea of a consolidated high school. If you were to go to a high school that was had all the high school kids from the three villages here and kids that couldn't or didn't want to go home could stay in overnight dorms uh, would you prefer that over having our own individual high schools like we have now yeah you would prefer yeah. the consolidated high school <laughs> yep you'd be going to high school with 150 kids instead of 30. 
Yeah. Was it, would that be preferable? Would you like that better? Yeah. Arnold, w if you had an opportunity to go down and go to school at Mount Edgecombe where they have all those things, would you want to do that? Would you want to do that, Daniel? Charles, would you would? I'm going. Mm -hmm. If you could do the same things right here, would you stay here and do them? Yeah. Yeah. I personally perceive this as a golden opportunity to, to lay this on the table and build a vision, put, create it on the table in the center and say, is, is, would, is this good? And add these other real, real, real uh, uh, aspects to it, which are the funding and those things I mentioned, then to my way of thinking, this is something that should be closely examined and, and uh, some, some soul searching done. And that's not all. I've been advocating for uh, Boys and Girls Club. I think um, they can, uh, uh, you know, that's the reason why um, uh, I'm in uh, a lot of these uh, organizations is because uh, it can have an effect, a uh, positive effect on our young people. And uh, those are uh, one organization that can do a lot is uh, the Boys and Girls Club. Stay tuned for more Heartbeat Alaska. Heartbeat Alaska is brought to you in part by Brown's Electric Lighting Gallery. Thank you, Brown's Electric, for your generous support of Heartbeat Alaska. For more than 50 years, Frontier Flying Service has been your connection to rural Alaska. Frontier Flying Service, a proud sponsor of Heartbeat Alaska. Welcome back to the busy life of Mike Williams. Think you've seen it all? Well, guess again. Mike Williams is so busy standing up for the rights of our native people that his hobby has gone to the dogs. So now that you're getting a taste of what it's like living in Mike Williams' shoes, imagine multiplying that by 10. That's right, Mike wears several other hats when it comes to issues involving rural Alaska. Mike also spent a few years working with the Alaska Humanities Forum and is currently the chairman of the Alaska Intertribal Council, where he is involved in strengthening tribal governments and advocating for tribal governments um, uh, ever since and currently uh, serving as chair um, and uh, dealing with issues um, such as subsistence, uh, lands into trust, and uh, Tribal Sovereignty uh, Protection Initiative. Uh, with the uh, State Tribal Millennium Agreement, uh, we uh, were able to have um, uh, Governor Knowles um, uh, recognize there are tribes in Alaska. And not just, uh, we felt that uh, not just recognizing uh, uh, tribes, but to um, have a government to government um, relationship with the state of Alaska. And with all uh, that, um, even though that's going on, I'm also the, um, the Vice President uh, of uh, Juneau Area on the National Congress of American Indians on a national um, uh, scale and uh, na national uh, Indian politics. And, uh, and we're dealing many of the issues um, uh, that we are dealing with as Alaska tribes and, um, and uh, trying to educate uh, the policymakers as well as the public about um, how important um, uh, uh, our tribes are and how important um, our uh, Indian country is. We would like to uh, uh, restore Indian country and um, also uh, have all the benefits um, as, um, uh, as tribes have to uh, get us out of um, the third world conditions that our uh, communities live in and uh, we like to have um, healthy uh, uh, communities and um, that are environmentally safe to live in, cl uh, clean environment, um, we adequate housing, um, uh, safe water to drink and uh, we would like to have a uh, um, good educational system and in the end uh, we would not depend on, um, um, you know, public assistance or welfare. But in the end, uh, we would um, 
be self-sufficient and we would um, have a, a meaningful life to live. And last but not least, Mike has also spent the last six years on the Native American Rights Fund, involved with cases such as the Venati case and the Katie John case. It makes you wonder how one man can do so many things at one time. And I've been amazed how I've been able to do it. Uh, I don't know how I do it sometimes, but um, when you put heart into it and your mind and soul to it, uh, it can be done. I can do multiple stuff, and, um, but um, again, um, I think I can complete them. It takes dedication and passion. And speaking of passion, Mike has got his hands full with one of his true passions, his dogs. Shut up again. Just have pups. Mike has been raising and running dogs his entire life. He has competed in several races and is an eight-time Iditarod musher. He is as devoted to his canines as he is to his fellow man. First thing I do is um, start up my snow machine and, uh, and go down and um, uh, pack um, uh, eight buckets of water and that's what um, uh, they, uh, uh, they have every day, eight buckets of water. and. Uh, and these dogs, um, you know, are all juiced up. They, um, uh, none of them uh, get dehydrated. None of them um, uh, are thirsty. Um, I start the soup in the morning uh, with uh, my propane cooker, and um, I have salmon soup or uh, whitefish soup or um, pike soup or any kind of soup. Um, caribou soup, um, moose soup, um, any kind of soup in the morning for the dogs. It has a real good liver right there. That's what uh, I think uh, my liver source come from. They have a huge fat liver and uh, it's good for the dog. These uh, fish, they've been eating uh, eel. So uh, I'm feeding eel at the same time eel and smelts and uh, and uh, white fish and pike that these fish eat. And uh, they, they eat all kinds of fish and, and it's a fat source. And um, at the same time, uh, I start the cooker and, uh, and uh, I use uh, uh, some lush fish, some burbot and some uh, salmon and and uh, some beef and some turkey skins. Uh, and I feed Ukanuba, of course, uh, which I think is uh, uh, the best dog food uh, that uh, a person can feed the dog. And they need to be 10 to 365 days a year. Um, every day, it's uh, uh, the dogs that I'm thinking about making sure that they're going to eat, even though I'm traveling throughout the country. Uh, I make sure uh, that uh, the dogs um, have the same um, uh, treatment uh, even though I'm gone with uh, my relatives or with my son or with my uh, daughters and my family. Make sure that uh, these dogs eat um, uh, even though I'm uh, sitting in a meeting somewhere. A um, lot of work. Um, I do my subsistence hunting and fishing for my dogs and and majority, 10 months out of year, I'm um, uh, fishing for my dogs and, uh, and uh, trying to um, make sure uh, I keep feeding them um, good stuff. And uh, again, uh, uh, I really enjoy what I'm doing and, um, and I, I ain't gonna trade, trade it for anything else. Hoot, hoot. Get up, hoot. Hoot, Ronnie, hoot. Nothing else uh, beats that experience of running out there by yourself and um, peace. it's peaceful out there. Um, seeing what they can do, being able to um, respond to commands and uh, telling uh, them uh, uh, that uh, they need to do something and, uh, and them responding. I don't have any emails out there. I don't have any phone. I don't even carry a cell phone. Um, and um, and I just uh, listen to you know good music and uh, 
it's just wonderful being out there with the animals and knowing that uh, they're going to get to you there. And I'm going to get uh, something like a, a spiritual experience as well. I think um, uh, being out there and the scenery, uh, different people and different uh, events, different, uh, you know, it's never the same and uh, it's always different and uh, and like I said, I was just going to do one I did or odd, but um, now I'm talking about my ninth run and and hopefully the tenth and beyond. Aviation. It's knowing how to make distances seem shorter. The art of buying you time. The business of bringing people together. And another reason to look up. Era Aviation. This is our sky. Welcome back. Mike Williams' journey through life has not been an easy one. But you've heard the saying, it's not how the story begins, but how it ends. This is a story of victory and sobriety. For Mike, running the Iditarod isn't just a race against the clock. It's a race against alcohol. It was alcohol and alcohol-related accidents that took the lives of all six of Mike's brothers. Now when he races, he races for sobriety and for his brothers. With my involvement with the um, uh, sobriety movement in Alaska has been uh, very, um, I've been very active with that because uh, of uh, uh, what I've seen uh, within my own family about those losses. Uh, accidental deaths uh, involving alcohol has been uh, a devastating uh, uh, effect on my own family. I um, um, lost uh, uh, six of my brothers. My oldest brother went through the ice um, uh, coming up from Bethel after a, a run for uh, booze uh, in uh, in Bethel and coming up uh, uh, ran into an open hole and uh, he was never found. Ted um, he uh, came back from uh, Vietnam and survived the bullets but he didn't survive alcohol. My younger uh, brother Walter um, died from uh, smoke uh, inhalation uh, in Bethel and I think um, he was again um, 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 using alcohol at the time. He won dog races. Walter did for seven years. Uh, he's always with me. He, he was the best in the West. Gerald uh, was another younger brother that uh, went down to Bethel um, one day with his friend and, um, and uh, upon their return uh, they uh, drank too much and I think he was passed out in a boat and they got into a boating accident and um, and he drowned. Timmy is um, also my y uh, younger, you know, younger brother as well. And uh, again, same thing, he came back from Bethel um, and uh, got into waves and um, um, they got into a, 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 the boat uh, cracked in half and um, that's also involving alcohol. And finally, uh, my um, uh, youngest brother, Fred, um, I think he um, made homebrew here, and, um, and uh, he eventually uh, got depressed and um, got really mad and uh, shot himself um, with a shotgun and, um, and committed suicide. I'm just uh, having to... Uh, um, tell these uh, stories to the public that um, you shouldn't 
we shouldn't uh, have to go through that here in Alaska. Uh, we're, uh, if uh, the rate we're going, I don't think we're going to uh, survive into the future, the way um, our people are killing themselves and are being killed. And, uh, and, uh, and I think that is uh, one of the things that I'm really uh, fighting uh, for my involvement with all these organizations that can do something. I think it can be done. It can be defeated, and my six brothers shouldn't have to go through that. Um, and uh, that's what um, is driving me to have a real good educational program here in our communities in Alaska. And uh, either you live in Akiak or live in Anchorage, I want the best for each child. And I hate telling this story, but I think uh, that story needs to be not told anymore. It's mind-boggling how Mike Williams can accomplish so much in such a short time. To many people across the state and across the nation, Mike is simply a hero. But in his own eyes... I'm just um, uh, uh, a regular guy that's trying to do the right thing for our people, and uh, I've expended a lot and expended a lot of time, a lot of my time and a lot of uh, my time for, for my family because... Um, uh, I really believe um, that if you are a leader, uh, you need to um, step up to the plate and lead and instead of follow. And uh, that's what I had uh, my training on in, uh, in uh, the past. And, uh, and I think if you're going to uh, be a leader, you need to uh, um, have sacrifice, you know, make sacrifices uh, with your time and with your family. and, um, and you have to have a strong um, uh, family and strong, um, um, you, you got to be committed. And I think um, in the end, um, um, I'm not necessarily considering myself a hero or anything, but um, I'm uh, considering that um, um, my dad told me um, as a young man, that uh, public service is a very important work. You don't get paid for it, but people succeed. And uh, if you do that, then uh, uh, good things will happen to you. And hopefully, good things will happen for Mike this year during the Iditarod 2002. Driving a dog team um, and taking care of the dogs uh, uh, on those races, um, I get satisfaction out of it, and um, and uh, those dogs just are my best friends. And uh, and uh, even though I have uh, no more brothers, I have uh, a lot of best friends here, and uh, these dogs are my best friends. And uh, and uh, running I did a rod, running these uh, uh, races is a joy. It's an honor, and it's a privilege. And uh, compared to what I've gone through personally, uh, it's a piece of cake. Thank you once again for joining us for Heartbeat Alaska. Native news, native information, and native entertainment. I'm Jeannie Green, and once again, it's a pleasure being invited into your home. Join us again next week for more native news from the north. Until then, God bless you. We'll see you next week.